Okay, today we have a kind of an easy day because uh, our worksheet for today is all review and we are going to be reviewing today and tomorrow. We normally would have just reviewed today and tested tomorrow, but tomorrow is going to have a Keith Hawkins day where many of you are going to uh, have a chance to hear the speaker. He's pretty good actually, uh, and if you aren't, that's fine. Other people are, and there's going to be a lot of kids missing that day, so we didn't want to try to test on the day when tons of kids are going to miss. So basically, we have two days of review. We have only this one worksheet, though. So I was going to think about dividing it in half, and then I thought, I'm just going to let you be responsible for it. You're going to have to do this worksheet by Wednesday. Okay, so you either do the whole thing tonight and be done, or do half of it tonight and half of it tomorrow, but you decide. I'm going to do a few problems with you to remind you what we've been learning so far. Let's go to letter C as in catfish. All right. First with this kind, you're trying to get it simplified. And the square root of 18, I know as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. Am I done? No. And what did I forget? The negative. It's square root of negative 1 of the three things it breaks into. Then you can simplify it to 2 for this. No, I'm wrong. A 3 for that. And then a square root of 2 is still there. And then an i. And then what's wrong with the way I wrote it? The i should be right after the 3. So final answer, 3i root 2. That's how you do things like number C. Raise your hand if that was easy for you. All right, good. Then let's move on to some harder ones that are further down the page. Clear my ink here. All right. This kind isn't much harder, but when you're done simplifying the square root of 28, you have to look for, does there, is there something in all of them? I'm guessing root 28 is going to break into something that has an even number when it's done. So can you think, what would 28 break to? 7 and 4, that's probably it. So root 4, root 7, and then of course root negative 1. And that makes 2i root 7. Why can't I stop? Because there's a 2 and a 4 and an 8 that all have a 2 in them, and you can do some canceling. Your answer will be something like negative 2 plus or minus the square root of something all over something. All right? So just make sure you do some canceling after you get it down to 2i root 7. All right, moving on. Third piece of advice I want to give you is about these weird i to the 5th, i to the 6th, i to the 4th. What the heck are you supposed to do on those? What do you know that i squared is equal to? Negative 1. So from there, it really becomes easy. You break all of these into an i squared times something else. Like i to the third, that's i squared times i. Right? So what's i squared? Negative 1. And so then what's the whole answer? Negative 1 for this times i, which makes what? Negative i. This one, the i to the fifth. I just figured out i to the third. I might as well use i to the third times i squared. I know what i squared is. It's negative 1. I know what i to the third is. I just figured it out right there. So what's negative 1 times negative i? Positive i. Very good. All right. That's how you do that kind, is you break them up into i squareds, which you know are negative 1. All right. Moving down the sheet a little further, everybody, please get to the graphing one, number 2A. Slide it down. You there? All right. Now, there's a few choices on graphing this guy. My first thought is it's not in the nice format for graphing. But it could be if I did the half and square thing to it. Everybody try doing half and square to that thing and figure out what the vertex form of it is. Remember half and square? You've got to push that 5 over to the right, leave room to do half and square it. Once I have vertex form, I'll know where the vertex is, and it'll be way easier to graph this problem. All right, so half 2x is x, or sorry, is 1, sorry, and 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to go plus 1 and a minus 1. Then this part's perfect. And what does that become? It becomes x plus 1 times x plus 1, which is why it's perfect. But then that's even better as x plus 1 squared. 
Do you remember this from first semester? And then plus 4. Now, why did I do that? Because now I know where the vertex is. So to graph it, you just go to negative 1. Remember this, you go to negative 1, comma 4. Negative 1, comma 4 is right there. And then it's a normal parabola. So I go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, over 2, up 4. There's my parabola. So if you didn't want to do it that way, there's another way. You could have just made an XY chart. That works for every graph you'll ever see. It's kind of slow, but you can do it. So like, for instance, I might have said on the next Y chart, I'm going to make this, I'm going to put in 0, and then I get 5. I'm going to put in 1, right here, 1 and 1. And I get 1 squared plus 2, which is 3, plus 5 is 8. 1 comma 8 has got to be on there. 1 comma 8 is on there. So then I have these two, and I just keep going and eventually find a bunch of points that work. Those are your options for graphing it. Then the solutions. There are no roots that are real. It doesn't touch here, see? So since it doesn't touch there, there's no real roots. But does that mean there's no answer? No. That means you've got to use this. x equals negative b, negative 2. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 4. Minus 4 or a, c, 4 times 1 times 5, all over 2a, which is 2. And that makes 4 minus 20, which makes negative 16. And the square root of negative 16 is an easy one to figure out with an i. What is it? 4i. So then this is 4i. And now you can do some canceling and you'll have your final answer. All right. That's all the help I want to give you today. So this is review. It should be on the easier side. Please ask me if you have questions. Now we're about to take a 20-minute little basics test because we have plenty of time to do it. And it's called the top 20.